This program is presented by Time Warner Cable. Hi and welcome to Classroom Connections. My name is Deborah Martone and I'll be your host for the next half hour. We've got some exciting educational events to share with you this month. We've got a psychology fair at Lake Park High School, a fitness fair at Glenbard North, and we also have the winners of the Calculations on a Curveball PSA contest. The winners of the Calculations on a Curveball PSA contest, which hope to instill in other students the importance of staying in school and taking math classes, were a group of five students from St. Walter's School. Congratulations! The judging took place here at Time Warner Cable in Addison, Illinois. We had representatives from Sports Channel, Time Warner Cable Studios, as well as a local teacher. The judging wasn't easy. All the entries were very, very good, and of course we can only have one winner. The kids were great. Let's take a look at the fun that they had that evening. <laughs> Time Warner Cable and Sports Channel would like to once again congratulate the winning team and also to thank all of those who participated in the PSA contest itself. Now we'll be taking a look at a psychology fair at Lake Park High School where students created interactive booths that taught other students something about psychology. Fair, Lake Park West. This is the fifth year of the Psychology Fair. Um, it consists of interactive booths, all designed and run by students. Um, Terry, do you want to say a word? <laughs> I'm Terry Lindenberg. Um, students create their own booths. They choose topics that they're interested in and um, research their topics thoroughly. They become the authorities on their subjects. Um, and then they create and design an activity that teaches something about their topic in psychology. 
One of the important things about the psychology fair, we think, uh, is that it really educates the school at large and community as well about what psychology is, that it's not just psychotherapy or psychological disorders, that really includes a broad spectrum of topics from sensation and perception to learning and memory, uh, social interaction, superstitions, we have a booth on superstition, uh, just a, a, a wide variety of topics and what we really aim to do is educate the other students in the school as to really what an exciting, ubiquitous area of psychology is. And I think that is reflected in the booths here. You see a wide variety of, of topics and interactive activities. You want to say anything else? Um, I think students uh, do a really impressive job with their topics and their activities. Also, um, they're really proud of what they've done because they have such ownership in the activities and, and their research. And they really learn their topics well because, as we've said several times here, uh, the best way to learn is to teach. And that's really what they're doing at their booths, teaching. Hi, I'm Jillian Gassmeyer from Lake Park High School, and our booth is on psychedelics. The title is Turn On and Tune In a Trip Back to Hate. What we're doing is we're um, teaching the kids about psychedelics and you shouldn't use them because they're kind of bad. Um, this tells about the flashbacks you have while using psychedelics. We got a lot of the information off the internet and through um, resource materials in the library. These are factors that will influence how you will react to them. Some of the influencing factors are your personality, your attitude, your expectations, and there's three different kind of flashbacks. Emotional, perceptual, and somatic. Um, these are code names. In our booth, we're mainly talking about marijuana, LSD, and shrooms. We're doing an activity, and Katie will tell you guys about it. Okay, basically we're concentrating on uh, LSD, marijuana, and shoes because that's what most Lake Park students we feel they experimented with. So we got this idea off the internet and basically what it said was um, like, like a, you experience an environment that someone would experience when they're on LSD or tripping right now. So we have a strobe light in here, a black light, some um, posters that will glow with it, and if you want to come around. And basically what the person does is they're going to put these glasses on. They're kind of weird. They make you see all weird. And they go in there. We have, do you want to explain the? What this is, is cornstarch. It's cornstarch and water. When they feel it, it gives them the feeling. When they touch something, when they're tripping, this is what's in the internet. In the internet. Um, when you feel something when you're tripping, it kind of feels like that. It's a really thick substance, but it looks liquid. OK, and then it kind of just dries to a powder, so it's just like a weird feeling. Because some of the points we want to make out here, if you want to. Um, we have them back there on our poster. Basically, those are all the effects of like LSD and other psychedelics. And what the point of the booth is, is you feel different things. You feel like how it's called, um, like perceptual down there. You see different things, like what you see, you're hearing, you feel. It's all, all mixed up from the effects of the LSD and everything. So that's basically what the booth is about. We have, we have surveys here for all the students to fill out because we're trying to find out how many students here actually are experimented with drugs and everything. So we have our surveys here to, and we're going to calculate those when we're done with them. This here are different plants. They want you to identify the different plants that are here. You flip it over. That's about all. We're also um, showing future presentations on um, the wall, a bunch of groups that use psychedelic drugs. Hi, I'm Allison, and this is our booth, and it's on learned optimism and learned helplessness, and it's called Mardi Gras because um, the psychologist that we were studying is named Marty Seligman, and when a student comes here, we have them put together puzzles. The first two puzzles, they don't know it, but the first two puzzles are impossible to do, and the third puzzle is possible, and we give them a time limit to do each puzzle, and they become more and more helpless as they can't do each puzzle. By the third puzzle, they think that they're not going to be able to do it, so we fill, have them fill out a survey why they can do it and why they can't do it, and their um, reactions and their like responses to why they can't do it explains um, if, whether or not they're pessimistic or optimistic. I'm Heather, <laughs> and um, we're trying to decide if people are optimistic or pessimistic depending on whether or not they've become helpless or not. Um, it depends how they fill out the survey. If they're willing to do more puzzles and if they think that they're, they'd be able to, they'd be more optimistic and have a good outlook on life. Um, and if it looks like they're not willing to try another puzzle again, then they'd be more likely to be pessimistic. 
Okay, hello, my name is Jackie, and the title of our project is Gender Stereotyping, and the name of our booth is Gender Benders. Okay, um, my name's Kim, and Gender Stereotyping and Gender Benders is basically about um, the obvious gender stereotyping that there is in today's society. And society um, tends to have certain characteristics for males and females, which we have over there. And um, many people believe that you can only belong to either the male characteristic group or the female characteristic group. But we're here to show that um, any characteristics can belong to either group. Hi, I'm Michelle, and um, what, one of our activities is we have uh, two baby pictures. One's a boy and one's a girl. And we have um, each person like rate uh, what they think the characteristics of the baby would be like. So uh, we've been alternating like every maybe period. So we, we give like some people the girl, we give her Lori, and then we switch and then give them Larry, and then we take take down how um, how people think you know they rate each type different baby. All right, we have another activity where we, we give the student a list of adjectives. And we give, it's the men and the women generally. And over here is the list. And they have to rate it one through five. And one being virtually never applies, and five is virtually always applies. And usually, like, athletic is towards the men, and loving is the woman. And we also have another one where we let the student watch a commercial, and they have to rate it, like, with the TV coding worksheet, like, who's the central figure and what the role it plays, usually the male. Hi, I'm Mariana, and we're giving students a chance to take surveys and watch stereotypical TV, and hopefully the results will support that people have a set mind on what is womanly and what is manly. We're hoping to educate them that this is wrong, and we need to start treating both genders equally. Hi, hi my name is Aziz Katani, and our boot's called Is Your Mind Playing Tricks on right? You? And our first activity is the penny activity. Uh, our hypothesis is that about 75% of the people will get the penny wrong, okay? And there's one penny that's right, and so far that we've noticed, about 75% of the people have gotten, or they have picked the wrong penny. And Megan's gonna tell you about the office. This is our office experiment. You have to study the picture for 10 seconds, and then we ask you questions. And when you say the word office, people associate certain words with the word. Like we'll ask them if there's a wastebasket and they'll say yeah, but there really isn't. So it's just reconstructing your memory to make things, to identify things that aren't really there. My name's Elizabeth and I'm going to show you about the movie. We have a clip from a movie where um, there's a violent scene and we, have, we play the tape, you know, telling them to watch it. And then we have them write down information about the person that killed the guy, if he's male or female, what color of his hair, his height, his weight, and clothing. And most of the people cannot remember because they just were, you know, glimpsing at it, but that's the way it would happen in an eyewitness testimony type thing. They don't really remember, so that's what we're trying to show. My name is Erin LaRoe, and we're at the Cognitive Dissonance booth. It's called the Age of Dissonance. And what cognitive dissonance is, is when you have an idea in your head, something you believe, but you have to act in a different way. So say people who smoke, they know that smoking is wrong, but what the way they act, they actually smoke, they're acting in a different way. And it's how you convince yourself to really believe the other thing. So here at our booth we have a couple activities. This is Rebecca Eaton to talk about our activities. Hi, yeah, I'm Becky Eaton. Um, basically what people do is they invite it into the booth behind this big black curtain here. They walk on back and there's an infinity symbol and they trace it 25 to 30 times. It becomes extremely boring after a few minutes. And then what we do is we ask them to take a little sheet of paper and go out and tell, walk around at least one, about five people to tell them that it was a lot of fun, it was exciting, it was really cool. And then they come back and they answer two questions on these sheets. Depending on whether or not which reward they get, it'll, it'll matter whether or not they really do change their beliefs on whether or not it's boring or not. They can convince themselves when they convince others that it really was fun and exciting or it wasn't. Okay, what we got here, we have this sign up here on the wall. It's a, an infinity sign. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to trace it with your finger 25 times. This is always the most exciting portion of the experiment here. Okay, thank you.
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you this pink sheet of paper here. I want you to walk out there, walk around the track one time, and we'd appreciate it if you tell at least five people, not the activity you did, but that this booth is really exciting, really fun, you enjoyed it a lot and it wasn't boring and that they should come here and try it. After you do that, come back with the pink table, come to the table, give it to the table, fill out two questions that they give you, and then you'll get a reward. All right? My name is Katie Murray. Um, our booth is called Who's to Blame? It's about the attribution theory, which ex it's a series of theories that explains why people do what they do. Um, uh, we have two activities here. One is a video activity, and it's talking about internal and external attributions, which it means do things, people blame things on because of something that they did or because of something that happened outside of the situation. For example, one movie that we're showing is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Frollo dies in this movie. We ask people whether they think that Frollo's death is because of his own actions or because of the actions of the other people around him. Oh yeah, our uh, booth is called Authority and Me. Uh, my name's Joe Mangon. Our uh, basic activities are from the Candid Camera series where they'd have a sign that says, step on the black squares only. And for no reason at all, everybody would just stand on the, the black squares. They wouldn't ask anybody why they were doing it or for what reason. So we designed an experiment the same way using like carpet and electrical tape and we uh, just say step on the silver squares and basically everybody has done it so far has seen it regardless if they know what our experiment is. Hi I'm Mark Sapita and the second uh, section of our, of our study here is after the people obey the sign and they walk only on the silver squares they get up to this tape player right here. Once they get to the tape player we play play a tape for them which basically is a series of loud and very annoying beeps and um, but they continue to listen to it even though it hurts their ears and they find it very repetitive and annoying we make them listen to it for about an hour because that's basically all we have to do is tell them to and they will and then after that we have them fill out a survey and on that survey after they're done with that we explain to them what the experiment is about and what it proved and here's Nick explain the experiment okay in the experiment we're just seeing and showing how people do listen to authority even though they not, might not necessarily not necessarily know why they're doing it. And some larger examples of this to more of an extreme would be uh, Nazi Germany, and more recently Heaven's Gate with uh, the mass suicide. And just that obedience to authority, it affects everybody in their everyday lives. I mean, just listening to the law, obeying laws, listening to your parents, and just doing what society and society's authoritative figures tell you what to do, that's basically what our booth is trying to show. Hi, my name is Ben Jed. I'm a senior. Um, what we're here is it's on superstitions and stuff, and we've done a survey. It's on a bunch of different superstitions, 16 different superstitions, and it just goes to show like that at least everybody that's filled out the survey, and we've had at least 300 surveys filled out now. Everyone at least has one superstition, and we're just showing that superstitions really aren't real. They're just in the mind, and they're just, it's the psychology project. And we're going to tally these up and show how many people really have superstitions. Our activity over here is, uh, is kind of test the validity of uh, superstitions. What the person would do is they'd roll the dice, and they would, uh, <laughs> they would if they, it's a one, that's bad, and if it's a six, that's good. They'd roll the dice, we'd mark it on the boards up there under no luck. And then they would do the good luck things, like rubbing the rabbit's foot and uh, knocking on the wood. And then they'd roll the dice again, and that would it would be a one or a one through six. And then they'd do bad luck things, like opening the umbrella or walking under the ladder or stepping on our crack. And uh, that then they'd roll the dice again, and we'd put it back on the board. And the idea is, well, she'll explain the results. And the results have shown that. Um Obviously superstitions aren't real and that people have superstitions in their mind and um, that's about it. But each person over here, we have a list of many of the students and teachers that have um, different superstitions. Mostly the uh, superstitions come from sporting events. Hi, my name is Allie Peltz and I'm going to describe our video that we did. Um, basically on our video we just did like different superstition, like we acted them out. Like Kim Russian over here, she broke a mirror and she had seven years of bad luck and she fell down the stairs or she got hit by a car, ran into uh, the door a couple times, and then um, 
like we just basically did you know I said I've never had bad luck before and I knocked on a piece of wood and Ben was our uh, our mom no no Kim was our mom and Ben was the person who stepped on the crack and he broke his mom's back and I found a penny and I picked it up and John asked me to prom as my good luck and that's about it. Our last segment takes us to Glenburn North High School for their fitness fest. Stephanie Potter, a senior at Glenburn North High School, was our roving reporter that day. And she talked to many students and teachers. Here's what they had to say. Can you explain why Glenbard North decided to have a health fair? Well, we've always had a, um, we've always had a, uh, uh, like a, a wellness week and uh, we've done some different things in the past. Uh, we've had some uh, uh, a multimedia presentation. We've had speakers come in. We thought this would be something different. And uh, to have uh, agencies and, and uh, people in the community that are involved in wellness, uh, to have them come in and uh, set up booths and let our kids go around and, and, uh, and kind of see for themselves, pick out subjects they are interested in, something different. Um, why do you think it's important for students to be presented with this information? Well, uh, you know, as we all know, as a, as a physical educator, we all know that uh, uh, how you feel about yourself, how you look, um, you know, your, your physical fitness, your health, just your overall health is extremely important. If you're, if you're healthy and uh, feel, good about, feel good about how you look and how you feel, um, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish. So these things are all important. I think the biggest reason that um, students need to hear this from professionals is so that they're getting accurate information and if they have specific questions they can get answers from someone that really knows what they're talking about in the subject area. In an all-out effort to be human, to be the humanistic school, you know, that we care for kids, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, this was a deciding factor in us trying to put on a fair like this and we have never had this before. A lot of our sister schools have been doing these for 20 years. So we thought we would try one. And it was important enough uh, to stop some classes, let the kids come in here and browse. It's very important for students to be aware of their mental health, their emotional health, their physical health. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity to, to, for students to get to know what's available in DuPage County. We decided to have a health fair because a lot of the students need the information and don't know where to get it. They may be interested in a certain subject or a specific health concern, and they can come here and hopefully they'll find what they need and where they can call. A lot of students do have concerns now about health. There's a lot of issues that come up as a teenager that you're unsure of where you can go for help, and we want them to know that all areas and fields that they have interest in can be. What is the main message or idea that you would like to express today at this health fair? Today I'm explaining how to sit at your computer terminals so that you don't get headaches or neck pain or back pain and to avoid the problems of carpal tunnel. It's trying to instruct the students on ergonomics, which they really can't relate to at this point, not being in the business world. So I'm trying to approach them right now with um, how long do you play at your video games and that kind of stuff. With the way it's set up right now, you have to lift your head up an extension to look at the data. That would cause neck pain and possibly headaches, okay? So if you remove a book for me here, Okay, so now the terminal is level with your eyes. So now you keep a proper head posture. There's, no, there's a proper bend in your neck. You're not putting the pressure on your neck muscles, okay? For seatbelt safety, and to show the difference between seatbelts and airbags, as we have over here, uh, this item over on the right here, this is an exploded seat, uh, airbag. When the airbag comes out, it comes out at about 200 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. The uh, airbag itself is coated with the... Um, uh, what would it be? A talcum powder, mm -hmm. so it doesn't rupture the skin when it comes out. And we want to make sure everyone, if they have these tools available to them, that they do use them, especially the seatbelts. It's also the law in Illinois that when you operate a motor vehicle, you will wear a seatbelt for the front seat driver and the passenger, as well as children. Mm -hmm. If they're under four years old, they have to be in a child restraint seat. If they're four years old or six years old, they have to be belted in. And of course, uh, that's for the front and back seat. And if they're uh, 6 to 16, they have to wear their seatbelt. It's also the driver's responsibility to ensure that they do have a seatbelt for a child. The main message and the idea is that AIDS is preventable. It is preventable. Uh, 
however, I mean, through abstinence. However, we have to be realistic and that we, we have to have preventative measures as well. So this is what we're here for, is that if everybody's not going to abstain, then we have preventative measures. At the uh, DuPage County Health Department, you can get an HIV test free of charge. It's anonymous, it's confidential, and uh, you only have to be 12. 12 years old and above, above without your parents' consent. Our presence here is aimed especially at the teenagers, and our aim is for those teenagers who have problems with a mother or father, sister, brother, friend, with drinking, we have an L teen groups that help one another. It's a self-help program. We're the Rape Crisis Center for DuPage County and oftentimes high school students know someone who has been sexually assaulted and they don't know how um, to help them. They don't know how to be a good friend to them. So we're offering information um, about um, our services that are confidential and that so they can help their friends get the help that they need. We're free and we're sliding scale and to, um, to help the people that you love, give us a call. The decision to have sex is just that. It is a decision. It is a responsibility. Um, you really have to educate yourself on, on what is out there afterwards. Every time they think about having sex, they need to think about really the repercussions of a life-changing element that's going to happen in their life. We have a uh, peer prevention program that is our moms and dads are trained to speak in high schools, uh, health classes, in junior highs, at youth groups, and they come in and they uh, tell their story, their personal story of what it was like when they were sitting in the class. Possibly, a lot of them like to go back to their own class, classes that they had at their school. Um, and they explain where they were at at school and what they were doing and how their life has changed. That's, that's a marvelous program that we do have. And for the moms and dads who are out there who need some help and support, we do have a scholarship program and all you have to do is attend and we do help you get back in school. It teaches students that it's really important to, to eat right and to exercise and to stay away from smoking. We have a lot of literature and information that, that gets that across and I think it's really making an impact on a lot of the students. So. Well, I think we're going to benefit the students here by showing them a little bit of what their fitness level is. When we do the three minute step test here, it kind of gives them an estimate of what their fitness level is. Um, when they come in and do the test, we can kind of give them an idea of where they're at, maybe that they need to do a little bit more than what they're already doing. Fitness doesn't mean you have to put in an hour a day. Uh, you can do half an hour a day. Even if you do three 10-minute sessions a day, you're doing something. Anything you can do is better than just sitting at home watching TV. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Well, that's all we have for this month's show of Classroom Connections, where we bring you a different angle on education each and every month.